Hello, Hoyos here. Welcome back to the third season of the Sidar Fight Competition. As you can see, we will be starting out the normal episodes with the new bracket graphics. So, as you can see, today the BV Gorshark Mark 11 will battle the CSR Mark 4C and the SR Mark 4 E4 will battle the Kumsara Mark 2D, the latter making for an easy uh, victory for me. Alright then, with the brackets over and done with, it's time to get the episode underway. So, the Gosh Hawks and the SRs are loaded up. I say, it is time to go. And there we go. So, what I want to talk about with uh, while the waiting is underway is uh, how frequently I, I will be putting out Sadar Fight Competition videos. Since I'm planning to do it twice a week, on Monday and on Friday, for as long as I can sustain that. Afterwards, uh, it would probably be back to the regular Wednesday upload schedule. And yeah, that's pretty much to get the the season 3 of Sadar Fight competition uh, over and done with, as the battle begins. Because as we all know from the last video, this isn't the best rule set for this version of BDA. Which is why I'll be conducting some tests for the season 4 guns only uh, rule set. As we now engage with M120s. So, two M120s from the Gush Hawks. Going towards the Asaris, two M120s each, I mean by that. As an outgoing M120 seems to be going towards one Goshawk. And it looks to be hitting. Ah, oh, it doesn't. Nice dodge then. One of the Asaris is going to, uh, going to go to the other Goshawk, actually. As that Asari doesn't seem to be interested in engaging a Goshawk at all. This Goshawk firing two aim nines as there is more there's gunfire coming from the back of it, suggesting that an Asari has indeed taken the position at his six. Now, uh, as you may have seen in other fight competitions, other videos, as another a another two aim nines launch, uh, the AI isn't all too <coughs> All too good with uh, aiming of the guns, so it's gonna take a while for uh, the uh, Asaris to take out Goshawk. As there is actually Asari debris, uh, <laughs> not Goshawk debris, as that last uh, bit would have suggested. Let's see what the Asari is missing. Oh, it's it's missing a lot. You're not going to survive uh, with that amount of damage. As an A9 is heading towards this Asari, taking out some more of uh, everything that is the Asari. And it's still dodging as another A9 hits. And it pretty much clears the, uh, the Asari of any missiles as another hit missile hits and the Asari is gone. So yeah then, uh, one versus two. Let's see how the Goshawks handle that, as that Goshawk actually looks to have some damage, but doesn't matter because this Asari is also having some damage. Let's see what the Goshawk is suffering. Well then, it basically lost one wingtip and it's Panther. So that's not going anywhere, as the other Asari's uh, cockpit has actually crashed into the ocean by now. And... We have a regular visit from AVG, which I now know how to deal with, so it wouldn't be interrupting us anymore. Which is pretty nice, if, if you ask me. So, um, the other Goshawk has crashed into the ocean now. It's been much a one-on-one, -on -one, but uh, looking at the damage on this Asari, I reckon the Goshawk has this one in the bag. As it comes for another bit of gunfire. The Goshawk actually being more accurate on its guns compared to the Asari, as you have just seen, taking out an A120 that was mounted on this one. 
So, um, we are having a little bit of, uh, having actually quite some controlling issues, which, uh, which uh, is to be expected seeing as it's, um, it lost one of the outboard engines as two N9s are coming towards its way. And sadly for uh, the Gorshawk they miss. And this one is, this one hits. That one hits, but it doesn't look to be uh, too much in, the, in terms of damage. The Gorshawk surely wanting um, to finish off this Asari as it looks to be uh, <laughs> Making it 1 0 for the Goshawks. It's actually half, yeah, it still has ammo, so it's plenty of ammo actually. Don't understand why it's just uh, avoiding engagement right now. As, um, well, the Sasari is demonstrating that a damaged, a wounded Asari is still capable of uh, engaging, at least semi engaging. As you can see, uh, the yeah, Asari not actually being able to turn on the Goshawk and making the most of its charge. As uh, I reckon we, um, we have a slight bit of an issue with a cowardly Goshawk. Well, it won't matter now. Or it will, because, well, um, the Asari just pulled up. And I reckon it has more fuel. Or not, because it just ran out of fuel. But uh, it surely ran a little bit longer than usual, missing one engine. Well then, Garshawk, it's uh, it's time to finish this one off. And this is, I I reckon this is going to be actually uh, a reoccurring issue: the fact that uh, planes can't actually engage their enemies because um, either the AI is cowardly the guns can't aim or it just is uh, expecting its opponent to die which is of course a good thing an improvement uh, considering the um, previous version of versions of ai but um yeah <laughs> this this battle is pretty much over and i'm going to give it to the goshawk since i cannot see this uh, being a draw since the Asari couldn't engage the Goshawk due to the damage uh, inflicted on it. So yeah, one nail for the Goshawk. It's time to go to the second battle. As uh, so this Asari crashes into the water elegantly and causes the FPS to drop to right about 3. Which is an issue. Probably isn't in 1.4.5. Uh, but I'm running 1.4.4 for the sake of uh, being uh, semi <laughs> Compliant with my uh, regulation set on uh, set upon earlier, as it looks like we have to uh, actually switch to the Goshawk, which um, <laughs> which was diving towards the ocean. Uh, I reckon trying to destroy the remaining Sahi because uh, I have and that's actually a quite common thing the AI does, uh, trying to engage targets which basically are already dead. Anyway, it's time for the second battle, and thus the perspective of the Asari. By the way, if you don't mind, I um, I actually quite like doing, uh, actually quite like viewing uh, from a cockpit view sometimes. So uh, if you don't mind, I'll be doing that if it reaches uh, a fourth battle, which I reckon it won't. Yeah, if it reaches a fourth battle, that means that we will be flying on board with the Asari for the second time. And it means that it would basically not be detracting from uh, viewing the flaws, the many flaws of the Mark IV C. And thus, it's uh, it's actually viable to um, view from IVA mode. Anyway, time to engage. And... I just want to dedicate a quick moment for uh, both the Racing Point for Sinia and one team, and one team's uh, cars almost getting to P1 and 2 until the safety car hit. Anyway, that's enough dedication for now as the A120s get fired towards the Asari. Just, um, yeah, this Asari is actually not uh, looking to be hit this time. But that M120, no, it's, it's actually not getting close to any of the Goshawks. So yeah, pretty lucky there. 
as an A9 gets hit fired and actually explodes quite close to the Asari, crucially taking out some uh, chaff and flare boxes. Actually, just chaff boxes. But it uh, doesn't matter now, does it? I also saw in the corner of my eye another aircraft being hit by some uh, A9 fire. But it looks to have uh, caused no damage, as this Asari is once again firing on the Gushhawk. The Gushhawk uh, having been much improved since the last outing in CFC Season 2. Uh, much appreciated, by the way, as this Asari is just flipping itself out. Suggesting that there may have been more damage from that AIM-120 hit or AIM-9 hit. As this Asari is pretty much done. The Goshawks doing an amazing job uh, actually taking care of the Asari. With that Asari gone, it's a 2v1 once more. And this Asari surely will be trying to... Uh, Keep one Goshawk at a distance using the remaining missiles it has while engaging the other Goshawk, which, um, by the way, I think is the best tactic uh, to employ in these kinds of situations, as it cannot get a gun, <laughs> get guns on the Goshawk. Meanwhile, its teammate, its uh, wingman, having fired two A9s into the sea. <laughs> that A9. Pretty much uh, looking to head nowhere. As there's one more A9 pretty much exploding because there was a Goshawk there. Well then, it'll be an Asari engaging this Goshawk. And it's looking like this Gosh, uh, this battle will once again see the Goshawk not <coughs> being victorious without some damage. As well, it has taken some damage, and I think I just contradicted myself. <laughs> ah, bad commentary galore. I'm just trying to get into the commentary uh, business again. As that is a really, really on-point strike for the Asari. Pretty much taking out all the wings and one of the engines. Surely <coughs> marking defeat for the Asari, as that... Uh, Weasley actually uh, looks like it's being displaced. Oh no, but uh, this one, this one's not recovering. It's 2-0 for the Goshawks as another in 9 just finishes it off for good measure. As if the Asari wasn't actually already crashing. So, as I said, probably going to be an easy 3-0 for the Goshawk. And it's pretty much turning out to be an easy 3-0 for the Goshawk. <laughs> Unless the Asari can actually mount a decent counter-attack to the Goshawks. I cannot see uh, the Asari's winning here. Uh, so we get some major lag. Uh, pretty weird actually, because uh, I don't have lag usually. As you've seen in the previous two battles, I don't have this much lag. Suppose I should just uh, look as, as a cup falls, I'm sorry. Suppose I should look at my task manager, see what's wrong, and possibly even close Discord before I return. Anyway, this pretty much, uh, this pretty much means that the technical difficulties tune will be on screen right now. We're back. I uh, took care of Discord, but it doesn't seem to have uh, fixed our lag issues. Really odd, actually, uh, seeing lag occur. Maybe I should uh, get that uh, Mr. Clean mod that uh, Joy Lord Aerospace is using. Because um, I reckon it would have prevented this amount of lag, because uh, it's probably just some debris left over from last, uh, last recording. As, well, a reload pretty much fixes it. And it's time to start another competition and see if the Goshawk will make it 3-0 or if the Asari can make a return. The Asari, of course, taking off first. Anyway, some more stuff about the Belgian Grand Prix, I guess. Uh, pretty impressive stuff by uh, Ocon and Perez uh, getting that second row in uh, wet qualifying. But man... What a crash for uh, Alonso. 
pretty much being caused by uh, one of my favorite drivers, actually, Hulkenberg, uh, making <laughs> making a making a very stupid mistake, breaking mm -hmm. very very late, torpedoing into Alonso and making Alonso crash over Leclerc. Leclerc being lucky that there was an there was a halo there. Anyway, uh, I suppose you don't care about Formula One as much as I do. Because uh, we are engaging again, 120s, going the way of the Asaris, actually going pretty close towards the rifle Gorsha, uh, the wingman uh, of the Gorshok there. <laughs> That's actually pretty dangerous. Before you know it, it's actually an A120 hitting the Gorshok fatally. Anyway, two A9s heading towards one of the Asaris, which we are engaging at the moment, actually making it a two on one, uh, the other. The rifle, or actually the wingman of the Goshawk does, as it engages using guns, which makes it, of course, uh, the craft that we'll be flying on board with. The guns actually having uh, looked to have caused some damage, and uh, the Goshawk not being interested, but <laughs> I can see why, since an A9 just pretty much took out the entire back end and the ability to. Uh, <laughs> engage in active combat for that one Goshawk. The Goshawk actually flying into terrain and dying now. So then, it's 2v1 for the Asaris. Uh, it's looking like the Asari is actually having uh, <coughs> having some chance now. 2 m is being fired as one Asari, but horribly missing as the Goshawk uh, takes some hits towards their uh, one of their crucial control surfaces, of course. Pretty much look like, uh, pretty much looks like this Goshawk is done for. As the Asari will make it to one, pretty impressive stuff. As uh, I didn't expect it, although that lucky A9 missile hit pretty much sealed the deal right there. <laughs> also, pretty much confirming that uh, I should be having the camera at a greater distance from the plane because uh, I would have seen that A9 coming if uh, if I had. Uh, if I had done that. Well then, some more gunfire coming in from the Asari as the other Asari actually fires two A9s. Uh, much more looking like uh, going towards its wingman actually. It's, um, it's just actually a common flaw on the Asaris, uh, them engaging their teammates. Uh, pretty, pretty annoying actually. But uh, I guess that's uh, the disadvantages of using uh, aim nine mainly. Aim nine being fired actually at one Asari. That's actually looking like a hit. Let's see what the damage is. It's uh, it's not all too much, but it's all on one side, so it's making it rather unstable while uh, rolling towards one side and also pitching towards one side. So um, it's it could be crucial damage for that Asari. As it uh, it would surely have hampered its ability to dodge missiles. Oh, there's an, some more gunfire from the Asari. As it's pretty much clear that the Asari cannot get its guns on target. It's uh, much rather looking like the Asari is actually going to run out of ammo, which uh, it's, it it has not happened by a long while. But wouldn't be surprised if that happens or it runs out of fuel. Uh, some more damage for the Goshawk. It's uh, yeah, it's, it pretty much looks like it lost this one. It's uh, spinning out of control now, but it's, uh, it's probably just going to recover this one as it looks like it only has one of those tail fins, making it more and more unstable as the battle goes on. But uh, it, it pretty much looks like with the Asari not being able to aim properly, uh, the Goshawk is actually a pretty durable craft. Unless it's being hit by a nines, which um, in fact of uh, this Goshawk's wingman is proved to be fatal. Anyway, we, we are just waiting on the Asari's uh, killing the Goshawk. The Asari is pretty much just uh, extending this battle beyond belief. It's making uh, the battle, of course, pretty boring, if you ask me. Uh, as boring as uh, the rest of the spa race actually was. <laughs> Enough with, uh, with the 
from one references. Uh, so this is sorry, actually ran out of fuel. I think the goshawk ran out of fuel. No, the goshawk is actually having some fuel left, and this uh, this Asari just ran out of fuel as well. That not stopping the Asari's from uh, firing some guns at the goshawk actually. <laughs> anyway, I think I'll uh, I'll have to call this a draw. With, uh, which makes it 3-1 for uh, the Goshawks. And well, uh, if it's 3-1, it's pretty much uh, the sign that the Goshawk has won the battle. So yeah, uh, congratulations to Beefy Flyer 1 for 1. Uh, the design not proving to be uh, as good as some may have expected. But it was good enough. To beat uh, the worst of the Asari's fielded in this competition. Let's get on to the second battle and thus the final battle of this episode. It's featuring the Asari Mark 4 E4 against the HC Komsaro Mark 2 D. Pretty much being a free, uh, a free pass for me. Yes, uh, I opted to randomize uh, all planes against each other as opposed to uh, randomize my planes against one of your planes as I did last season. Since well, I didn't uh, fill half the field this time. Uh, actually, I didn't field half the field. Uh, I didn't make the craft of half the field. Simply because you made seven entries, not six. <laughs> so, um, this free pass is pretty much because you submitted either too little craft or too much craft. Either way, let's get right into that battle. Alright then, with the last of the Komsaros parked, it's time to engage in another battle. The other Komsaro, pretty hyped to being to uh, engage with Nasari for the first time here. It uh, now is starting the competition, of course. As you, uh, as you may have seen already, as you may have spotted, <coughs> the Komsaro has uh, a fatal flaw, a probable fatal flaw, which uh, I, di I didn't spot before, which is uh, the missile rails being at their default length. So, um, besides that, the Komsaro is actually the inferior craft towards the Asari Mark 4 E4, I reckon. So it's pretty much going to be a present for my uh, E4, as my Komsaro will most likely get taken out. In Komsaro, I uh, fielded it simply because I needed entries. Uh, as well, the Komsaro is, isn't actually that, um, that good of a craft as it's time to engage. You may... Uh, can, you can already see that by its turning radius right here. It's uh, <coughs> so yeah, this pretty much accept that the Komsaro will uh, pretty much be the craft that will be destroyed this um, this round. As it's time to engage with Aim Nines. Aim Nines having a, a lot of large, a rather large <coughs> drop time, of course, pretty much because of those. Uh, because of those lengthened uh, missile rails. Looks like all the craft have... Oh, I spoke too soon there. <laughs> I wanted to say that all the craft have uh, survived the initial uh, aim mine engagements. But uh, it's not looking the case as this Komsaro is being eaten, eaten up easily. Being teared up easily by the Asaris. This Komsaro Mark II D pretty much left to uh, clean up, uh, actually pretty much left to try and uh, do something against the Asaris. This looking like a very quick match. As the Asari, Asari Mark IV E4 is clearly the superior craft. It's, uh, the only thing that the Asari has to do is to uh, finish off the Komsaro, which it does by letting it crash into the air. A trick commonly used on the Mark IV C, actually. Quite a few Mark IV Cs have just flown into the ground and crashed and died. 
uh, because I I'm not that great on uh, tuning the AI. So yeah, pretty easy victory for the Mark IV E4. As it is time to fly on board with said craft. Um, what to say actually? Well, I suppose I could just talk for a bit about uh, CFC Season 4, a little bit of my plans. So, um, Season 4, I'm going to do actually some extensive testing on all guns and seeing how much I'll allow. And by extensive testing, I mean I'm, I'm just going to put one of each gun against. Uh, against an, a normal uh, wing plate, either the Mark D or the Mark E uh, structural uh, wing plate and see how much hit it takes for uh, it to completely and utterly devastate the wing plate and from that basing, uh, <laughs> basing the amount of guns allowed uh, for each type of gun of that. I reckon uh, the 102 mm howitzer actually uh, is going to blow up the wing panel in one shot. However, I'll make an exception for it because, well, it's pretty hard to aim just one gun. It's probably going to be two guns, uh, two 102 mm uh, howitzers that I'm going to be allowing. It is going to be, uh, it is going to make for rather fun battles as it is time to engage. The Mark IV E4 having dropped uh, two. The two A120s for two A9s, uh, this being a more competitive seeing as it's rather hard to lock on to uh, a craft specifically made for CFC Season 3, or rather any CFC rule set until now, as four A9s look, look, look to be heading the way of this one. No, it's actually heading towards the other Asari, and that doesn't look... Uh, Look to be effective, but I think the other Asari has actually taken a missile hit and died. Ooh, the Komsaro might stand a chance actually, making it 1-1. So yeah, as you can see, my, many of my planes not actually being able to dodge stuff, to uh, dodge nines well. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much a common issue with uh, my modern modern craft. Uh, this this Asari's uh, guns range actually being set at 2,000 meters. Uh, it's not that competitive since uh, it should have actually fired a 9 there. It would probably be more competitive as two 9s are heading towards its way. And they hit both of them actually. That uh, last one looked like a crucial hit, but uh, it didn't do any damage. Weird. As the Comsaro is uh, employing its superior gun spread to finish off the other Asari for make it 1 1. Going from a pretty much chanceless position, as you've seen in the first battle, they pretty much just scored a lucky 8-9 hit with uh, one of the Asaris, pretty much making sure that it would win. As uh, another 8-9 just comes and finishes this, uh, this E4 off. So yeah, going to the third battle now. Ooh, I didn't uh, press F9. Uh, uh, <coughs> Didn't press his knife long enough. There. I think I'm going to just do a cockpit view of uh, one of the commissarios, just seeing uh, where the guns aim actually. And I'm pretty much hoping that um, one of those in lines will hit again. Because uh, that's probably going to be. Uh, Going to be what it, what this what this uh, plane uh, depends on a nine missile hits <laughs> because it's not too maneuverable and this so despite having the superior gun spread it's actually um, <clears throat> it's actually just a case of it not being maneuverable enough compared to the Mark IV E4 which uh, has been fitted with maneuverability up upgrades compared to the Mark IV C. As uh, I chose to <coughs> uh, get two of those uh, shuttle wing control surfaces uh, to control the pitch and the and uh, the roll, I me mean, not being that well at 
<coughs> at separating my control surfaces at that time. This comes are actually featuring uh, separate control surfaces for pitch, yaw, and roll. And <coughs> me previously including both pitch and uh, roll into the same control surfaces. As one of the Comsaros actually explodes, as I said, uh, that missile rail thing might be a fatal flaw, and it has proven to be. And uh, that pretty much reckons cockpit view uh, as not uh, not viable because well it's going to get utterly and completely annihilated and I want to see it from uh, third person rather than first person as uh, well some of the fuel tanks have gotten uh, gotten removed as well as their yaw control services this uh, Komsara doesn't look uh, long for this world but that's uh, pretty much the case if your wingman blows itself up by firing a missile which, uh, as I said in the previous video, was actually going to be a thing that was uh, going to happen. Yeah, this 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 is pretty much the end for this comes out of Mark Two. It's hanging on for dear life, though. This um this comes out actually proven to be rather um <coughs> proven to be rather <coughs> survivable, rather. Uh, Tough as the Asari is actually. As <laughs> one of the Asari is actually, uh, yeah, it, that uh, it, that's probably going to be fatal damage, isn't it? No, it's it's not fatal damage. It's, actually, it's no damage. It looks to be no damage at least. Yeah, no damage. Oh no, a little bit of damage. We can survive that, and this comes our mark to the certainly can survive its damage because it's pretty much losing uh, pretty much lost one of its uh, wings as you can see from, as you can notice from our voice it's pretty much over already and uh, there it goes it's losing the weapon manager and AI positioned at uh, rather unfortunate positions and you can just see everything at the front just Everything pretty much jittering as uh, this craft is pretty much the uh, definition of clipping, actually. And it's time to go to the fourth battle with the Asari having the advantage with 2 1. And if you ask me, it's going to be 3 1. I wouldn't be surprised if it's 3 1, actually. I should stop saying actually because I'm noticing it now. But I'm um, going to do a cockpit view of uh, the Asari Mark E. Just simply, just for fun, because um, we already know that the Komsar is probably going to lose. Unless the camera advantage is playing, uh, or rather camera disadvantage is playing, uh, having a player with us. Time to... Um, yeah, that's it's pretty much time to take off and do all the things. And I've run out of topics to uh, to talk about. Oops. Oh yeah, I was mentioned by uh, Johnny Roger Airspace one of his videos. Uh, so if you've come from there, hello. But um, I reckon not many people have since my views weren't really that boosted from the JRA shoutout as uh, neither were my subscribers so I think I've uh, drained pretty much everything I could out of uh, out of being shouted out there it's pretty much having no effect now it's time to uh, fire the A9s as A9s from Comsaros are going towards the Asaris and there's actually an explosion of one of the A9s rather close to an Asari and maybe that has done some uh, fatal damage but we can't we can check we are on board with one of the Asaris three missiles actually heading towards that Asari and that Asari the wingman not looking to have dodged it you can actually see how much the Asari moves uh, in a typical battle just going from cockpit view Ah, 
Does it have damage or something? I mean, yeah, it, it, it just... It must have. No, it doesn't. I mean, it, it was doing some rather weird maneuvers as 1A9 comes in and... It's gonna hit, it's gonna hit, it's gonna hit, it's gonna hit, yep. And another A9 hits. And that pretty much takes this E4 out of commission. As this E4 has also suffered a hit. But uh, didn't bother to assist its teammate in not dying. As you can see, this uh, this is sorry, again just taken out by some missiles. And that is just friendly fire, isn't it? Unbelievable this. This is not going the way of the Asari Mark Mark 4E4. Me reckoning that uh, it's the superior plane, but actually turning out, uh, turns out that it's not. Ah, the two Comsaros are still alive, and yeah, this pretty much touched that missile that I saw out of the corner of my eye. Going to be interesting to see what the uh, Comsaros are going to do if. Uh, the E force die, or if the fact that this E four is still surviving by its Weasley engine, and it, I mean, it's not, it's not going to survive for much longer or be uh, actually be of use in this battle besides a target for the Comsaros, but um, that may turn out to be crucial. We just don't know. Well, it um, for sure looks like right now that. The uh, other very damaged Sari isn't the main focus of the Komsaros. It's rather being uh, this Sari that's still flying and and healthy and shit. Oh, that Komsaro actually firing towards that Sari, so discard that. And this Komsaro having flown over the Sari, and as we know, that's a fatal mistake in most battles. Uh, rather be in uh, in Warfinder. Or in a BDAC battle, <laughs> but um, if you if you have guns uh, on your plane, it's pretty much a fatal flaw, a, a fatal mistake rather. The tiny target that Comsaro is uh, making it rather hard for the Asari guns to hit, as the wingman uh, has just crashed into the ground. The wingman of this Asari. And this Comsaro, using it, uh, not being able to maneuver well against the Asari, being rather effective at it. The Comsaro also being a tad bit slower than the Mark IV E, that looking to have actually helped out the Comsaro. As um, so it so often does. But yeah, it's uh, it's pretty much going. To, it is going to be two two, as this same nine is going in for the equaling hit. No, this same nine is going for the equaling hit. No, it's just going to be gunfire that's going uh, for the equaling hit. Then uh, making it two two for the Comsaro Mark two D, and it pretty much look like, and it uh, pretty much looks like, where I place the camera, uh, all craft die. It, uh, that not being an, a grammatically correct sentence, but I don't care. As the Cesaro is pretty much tumbling towards the ground and the Comsaros have won their second battle. Not in a row, but surely their second battle. And the Cesaro is also having uh, won two battles. But pretty much meaning that we will have a fifth round. And it will be again on board with the Comsaros. Yeah, it's quite interestingly, the Comsaros are uh, proving to be quite uh, on an equal level the Osari Mark IV E4s uh, as opposed to the C's, actually the original C which I against, which I tested uh, it against. Uh, it, it was inferior, it was pretty much inferior, or rather uh, slightly below the C's, but uh, I, I then I then don't, don't know where that puts the E4s. I have, I have actually no idea where that puts, where that puts the E4s. Jeez. 
Anyway, just a quick thing about the channel. I, I think it's actually rather funny that um, my Minecraft video on the Velocity Server has more views than uh, the Star Fight Competition Season 3 uh, bracket uh, and checkout video or overview video. So uh, it's, it's pretty much looks like that uh, the, the series that I'll be releasing once a month as a monthly update will surpass um, in single in single episode views uh, this series of Star Fight competition. Not that it matters too uh, much to me, but um, just an interesting statistic because previously Star Fight competition has actually been. Uh, my most viewed series on the channel. <laughs> it uh, it didn't have uh, high targets to beat either. The Spore series, uh, most recent episode, have only gotten three views. <laughs> As one of the Commissars blows itself up again, and it pretty much seals its fate. The Asari's then will take three two and move on. To the quarterfinals of the Sadar Find competition. Just waiting here for uh, the, Osiris to the Osiris to finish off the remaining Komsaro. As it has uh, gone, not quite predictably, but the battle has gone um, in the favor of the force. Though the E4 is being more prone to aim 9 hits actually than the C's. Uh, quite a curious case actually. Or it's it's just a case of the Consaro Mark 2D having superior missile settings. I honestly don't know. Or luck. Luck? It's, it could be luck for all I know. As the last of the aim 9s go off the Consaro, and the Consaro takes a hit. That's taking out almost all its intakes. And. Well. Just waiting here. Just waiting. And another hit. That took out the yaw surfaces. And you can just see how uh, inaccurate these guns are. Because. As. Uh, it gets finished off. Because if this would have been 1.0.0.0 uh, uh, BDAC uh, that the previous uh, Solar Fight competition was in, the Osiris would have pretty much finished off uh, the Commissars by now. Not, it's not only being due to uh, the aim of the craft, it's, it's also due to the new revamped damage system of course as the Asari rounds off its five round battle superior and as a victor and uh, it will move on to the quarterfinals and it will pretty much make sure that this episode is coming to an end yes indeed pretty soon you'll be hearing bureaucratic's Bureaucratic Boys Pop with my newest intro sequence as shown in the previous episode actually. And I have I've nothing to say, nothing more to say. So yeah, goodbye. It's Bureaucratic with Boys Pop.